Wednesday Good Love. Konnichiwa, and welcome back to another edition to Wednesday Book Vlog. Now, uh, on the last video, I asked you guys to let me know if you would like me to continue this, and I got uh, a lot of good reviews, so uh, I guess we will continue to do these every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be posted every Wednesday. So, here we go. So, I got some really good books for this week. I got uh, four books from series and one standalone novel. So, the first one is called... Well, the first series is called Guardians of Gahul. Yes, that is pronounced Gahul. Uh, some of you might think it would be pronounced Gahule. But no, and it's pronounced Gahu. So this series is about 15 books long. It's about um, this kingdom of owls. It's just really not set in any kind of times timeline or anything. Because it's just about owls and they don't keep time. But it starts out with this family of owls. Um... His parents were murdered by these other savage owls, and then he was kidnapped. And the story grows on from there, where he finds a band of warrior owls. He joins them. He finds what he's meant to do. Um, and not to give any more away, in case you want to read the book series, but it's really awesome. There's a lot of action throughout all 15 books, I mean, and they're not really that big of books, there's like, what, um, let's see, there's about 222 pages in this one, it's really thin, uh, and basically all the books are like that, but it's like 15 books long, and if you do the math, 200 times 15, yeah, that. So yeah, um, it's really awesome book series, and um, Wolves of Beyond actually came from that series. It's by the same author. So, um, I mean, if you like barn owls, you know, screech owls, pygmy owls, all that, that's your series to go. The next one is called The Chronicles of Nick. Now, this series is really awesome. Um, it's about a kid going through high school and um, he finds out that his upbringing wasn't what he thought it was and he basically finds out he's the son of this really apocalyptic demon and he struggles with the fact that he's trying to not be like his father but also control his demon side and then there's, like, uh, other factors, like time travel and death and all those guys trying to control him, you know, released his powers, and he tries to fight back with it. It's a really awesome series. It goes pretty in-depth with the uh, psychological stuff, like, you know, battling stuff in his mind, you know, and trying to control this um, demonic urge that's telling him to basically destroy the world. Um, so, I thought it was a really cool series because it really does keep you enthralled about what's going to happen next. You know, is he going to destroy the world? Is he not? What's going to happen next? But it's a really awesome series. You should check it out. And this is my favorite cover by it so far. I believe it's about eight books long. I don't think it's finished yet. I'm not sure about that. The next one is a finished series. And these books are pretty huge. Um, it's about um, this, a land called Algasia, and it's run by this tyrant who controls the land, doesn't care anything about the residents, 
wants to control all the power in the world, takes all the items, all the mythological stuff that he could find, all the powers. Um, he killed all the people that protected the land. He basically killed off all the dragons, but three. Um, and one of these lands in the hands of someone called Aragon, and he finds that he's a magic user, so he leads a band of rebel rebels to try to take back the land and to fight this evil king, Galvatrox, I believe I said that right, and it's a really awesome book series, um, it has magic in it, but it's not like really heavy magic, it's like Hey, uh, cost this, you know, like, that, that series, don't get me wrong, it's a really awesome series, but this one is, like, more realistic, you know, it's words of power, certain words can actually kill you if you use them, and he, uh, goes on this journey of learning how to fight, how to learn magic when he didn't even know he knew magic, and he never had that kind of upbringing. He goes on to try to become a dragon rider, and it's a story about him and his dragon fighting back against this evil king and his empire. There's a lot of stuff in here, like uh, elves, um, dwarves, there's uh, ergots, um, and you probably don't know what ergots are. They're these, um, according to the book, they're these ram-headed people who are really strong and they look like Ram's face but they have a human body and they're apparently evil but some of them are like eh okay um there's shades um shades are basically things that have been resurrected from the dead but infused with evil spirits um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in these books. It's not too heavy on the lore or the history, so it doesn't, you know, it's not a dry kind of book series. It's actually full of details, juicy details. Um, I'd say the timeline of this book series is pretty much pre-days. Like, it's swords and everything, you know, there's no you know, modern day inventions and everything, and it's set in like a mythical land, so yeah. And this is my favorite book's cover of the series. It's the, I believe, the third book? What's it? The third book? Mm, yeah, book three, the third book. So yeah, it's really awesome, you know, it's really big book series, but it's only four books long, so if you're looking for a book series that has really good stuff, but it's like kind of short, that's your book series. The next one is another dragon series, but this one is different. The series is called Legends of the Dragon Realm. Now in this book series, the dragons themselves are evil. And they give powers to these evil overlords who do their bidding. And this man, who is this farmer called Caleb, kind of similar to the previous book, but different, finds out that he has magic in him. And he goes to an academy, learns how to use the magic, then he goes on a quest to rebel against the evil dragon lords and their kings and I wasn't too sure about this book series because it kind of jumps right into the story it doesn't give no back lore or anything until like book two and early book three um, but it's really awesome though because the words are not what you would expect like, they made their own kind of type of dialect. So it's like you're in this mythical world and it kind of engages you in a way where 
you're reading this kind of dialect from this person's point of view and all these other person's point of views and it builds a really good story world. The only drawback I thought the series had was they didn't provide no type of history, no type of timeline, no type of lore until the second book, so you're kind of lost in the first book, like, what's everything going on, okay, there's a dragon king, apparently he's evil, uh, okay, uh, all the lands are controlled by evil overlords, so you're like, what? <laughs> but it's really awesome, and it's engaging, so I liked it, and yeah, Dragons of the Dragon Realm. Legends of the Dragon Realm. And last but not least is the standalone novel. Um, if you read the Twilight series, you'll know what this book is. And um, I like this book because, one, it's a standalone novel. And I don't normally read a lot of those. I like book series because, you know, I want more, and I want more, and I want more. <laughs> so, but this one actually ties everything up, you know, doesn't leave a uh, ending where you're just like, what? Isn't there more? And so it's called The Host. Um, let's see if the camera will focus on that. By Stephanie Myers, and you can see it says the Twilight Saga author. But this book is about the world as of right now in this timeline, but it's invaded by these type of aliens. But here's the twist: they're not here to destroy the Earth; they're here to conquer it. Now, not in the way the Conqueror would be saying, okay, you guys bow down to us or you're all dead. This alien race actually insinuated themselves into the humans because they thought mankind was destroying itself too much, which is, you know, if you look at it, kind of true. And they saw that the Earth was, um, you know, suffering. They're this alien race that go from world to world to world to world to world to save the residents and the world itself. So apparently they found our our world called Earth. They saw what was going down, what was happening to the environment. So they came down in a ship and they took to some of the humans and they were just these like tentacle white glowy things and they would make a slit at the back of the neck put one in and it would connect to the spinal cord and the brain stem and completely insinuate that human and that human mind would be gone like they would not exist anymore the aliens did not understand that they were actually committing a type of murder so they insinuated the whole world except for this group of few rebels and I'm saying all of this without giving in spoilers and they basically it's a story about how an alien race um, discovers actual emotion they're a race that you know trust each other inexplicably there's no doubt there's no jealousy there's no nothing it's just a happy-go-lucky race who want to help others. And it's about this one alien in particular who learns about human emotion. And it, the book builds on that till the end where they fight back. Um, so not to give way too many details, if you thought that was an interesting book, it's called The Host by Stephanie Myers. Well, that's all for this episode, guys. Um, I hope you liked the books that I described for this Wednesday book vlog. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.